a very happy Wine Wednesday, everybody. We're doing something a, a, a little bit crazy and different tonight, and it is very exciting. <laughs> and I am so excited uh, uh, to be doing this with you guys. So we're doing our own little Mr. Cheese Pop Food and Wine Festival. That That is what is happening tonight. I'm so happy the chat is working right off the bat. We love this. Hi, guys. How are you all doing? So tonight's going to be a little wild and a little wacky because it's not just me. It's not just another guest. We've got a whole bunch of people joining us tonight. I've got a lot of guests. So it's going to be crazy, but it's going to be a lot of fun as always. So uh, tonight's wine, first of all, before I introduce everybody, they're all in the waiting room hanging out. It's very exciting to have a waiting room, by the way. So before I introduce everybody, this is what we're doing tonight. We'll be tasting wines from Guglielmo Winery. Okay. These are two wines we'll be tasting tonight, which is very exciting. We will also be eating and, 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 you know, I'm super excited to be eating. We've got, this is the small charcuterie board from Black Market Culinary. Uh, I have a large one here too, which I, I, I can't even, guys, let me, let me just show this to you. This is from Black Market Culinary as well. Oh my goodness. Okay. So, I told you, I told you it's, it's a food festival, but that's not all because we've got amazing dessert going on here too. So this, this over here, I've got cookies <laughs> from C'est La Vie Bakery. Okay. <laughs> the most beautiful looking cookies you've ever seen. I'm not kidding. Like, this is just, this is insane stuff. So we're gonna, we're gonna try a few things as we go along tonight. Um, and we'll get to talk to some people that made this. And it's gonna be a ton of fun. I have like, I need a much larger table is, is what I, I actually feel like I, I need here, you know? <laughs> Seriously. So um, beautiful stuff going on here. Um, I'm gonna bring uh, everyone in so we can meet everyone and we can start uh, drinking and, and eating things because I know you guys are at home are probably already doing that. So yeah. Uh, so let me go grab everyone from the waiting room and, and we'll get going, okay? Also, thanks so much, Tom for the super chat. It is great to uh, see the chat working and thanks to all of you for being here today. So without further ado, uh, from first I'll introduce everyone from Guglielmo Winery. Okay, so we're gonna say hello to uh, Christina. So Christina is popping in over here and Hello, Christina. Hello, Max. How are you doing? I'm great. This is so exciting. <laughs> so you're here. You're 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 you're, uh, you're not at the winery. You are. You're closer to me. Yes, I'm in Orange County. Beautiful. Um, and now we're gonna go live to the winery where your dad and and your uncle are waiting. Yes. So let me go bring in. George and Jean from Guglielmo Winery. Let's go grab them here. Okay. There we go. Hello. Hello, George and Jean. <laughs> How are you? Good afternoon. I guess everybody's on there, right? So, hello, everybody. <laughs> Beautiful. You are. Look at this. We got the we got the the view of the of the vineyard. Uh, we thought we'd make it a little different in the fact that you can see the vineyard behind us. This the ranch here is about eighty two acres and uh, uh, right in the heart of the Santa Clara Valley, right on the valley floor. And uh, so you can see the mountains on the background. 
course, houses on the other end and uh, some beautiful dormant uh, grapevines. That variety you see right there is actually Merlot. Okay. Right in back you is Merlot. Right behind me is Merlot. Beautiful. Wow, this is gorgeous. But yeah, so we, we, you know, Christina's got the fake background, but we get the yeah. real deal. We get the real deal of it. Yeah. <laughs> real <laughs> deal. We're standing out here in the cold for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is cold. It is cold today. Yes, yeah. it is cold. So we got our antifreeze well, right We're here. fine. That's why we're dressed like this and we're outside. So it keeps it fresh. We won't fall asleep on you. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is beautiful. So, um, uh, for everyone that does not know, where are you actually located? We're at uh, 1480 East Main Avenue in Morgan Hill, California, which is about 20 miles south of San Jose. Okay. And 10 miles north of the garlic capital, Gilroy. Garlic Festival area in yes. Gilroy. Okay, so right, right up there. Beautiful, Morgan Hill. Okay. Garlic. Wine and garlic go great together. I mean, this is, yeah. Um, so, okay, here's what I want to do. I want to I want to get right into tasting the Grignolino Rosé because this is, this is, um, this is something I've never, ever tried. So I am, I'm excited there's to. About, uh, there's only about 50 acres of Grignolino in the whole state of California. It's very, very limited. There's only about two or three wineries that actually do it as a varietal. But I can tell you 40 years ago, Behringer had a Granulino, the old San Martin winery in San Martin had a Granulino, Inglebrook had a Granulino, and then it just disappeared. So there's not much left. So it's totally dry. Your color takes on a brickish color. Yeah. Uh, the, And so one of our specialty varietals, because it does come from the Piemonte region of Italy, where our family uh, migrated, my grandfather came from and my grandmother. So yes. it's got a special attachment to us. So, so is that why you made it? You know, I'm Italian too. So well, we my, can tell your hands out there. Like yeah, said, yeah, yeah. Doing, doing it. Uh, so. Yeah, it, it's, we, we can't help it but talk with our hands. I mean, it's... <laughs> I'm sure if my if my mom is watching right now, I'm sure she's doing the same thing. Uh, but yeah, so so is that why um, you decided to? Because you, you make a lot of Italian wines. So is it? it it's because of the family. I concentrated on that end of it in the last uh, what 10, 15 years. We have had a Grignolino here that we bottled as a rosé probably for the last uh, I'm going to say 50 years at least. We used to bottle it in a 750 and a half a gallon. That's before we went to the metric system. And, um, you know, to give you an idea, back in 1970, a 750 granulina rosé would cost you 70 cents at the winery. Did you hear that? Point? 70 cents? 70 cents. Yeah. 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 That's, how, our, that's how yeah. long we've been in the wine business. We yeah. can tell. But so, you Seventy. So, so because you've been, you said, you know, you've been in the wine business a long time, and and actually, at ninety six years, right? Correct. Well, the winery's been here that long. Yeah. Right. The, the winery has been ninety six. And my grandfather started, started wine. with fifteen acres he bought here in nineteen twenty five, which is during prohibition. So he actually made it underneath the house. You know. French people need wine every time they sit down at the dinner table. So yeah, he actually transported from here to San Francisco where he em immigrated from, from Italy, Italy, to New York, and then across and then to San Francisco. So it was just a part of the culture, part of the culture. Every time you sat down, you needed something to drink. Yeah. Drank beer, Italians and French and, and Spanish drank wine. So it was just part of that. I mean, even up until about the 19, uh, well, that was all pretty much delivered bulk. Right. Well, okay, then the glass situation came in and we started bottling in gallons. We actually delivered wine to your house like a milkman would 
you had to order five cases of gallons of wine. That's 20 gallons of wine at one time. And those 20, 20 gallons of wine, five cases was the minimum order. And I can remember on the invoice, it was $27.77. And that's a long time ago. <laughs> Yeah. I'd, like to, I'd like those wine prices back. No, we're not offering that pricing right today. <laughs> Get excited. When I talk about these prices in that time, we're looking at, uh, you know, uh, probably 200 wineries, less than 200 wineries in the state of California. We have almost 5,000 now. Right. So there was a change. And the fact that most Americans considered the soda water palate. They really weren't the drinkers of wine. It was those ethnic groups that came here that mm -hmm. most of the wine. Right. I, I think, um, well, I think this so is it, fantastic. I like this. This it's is uh, fine. totally dry, bone dry. It's got some nice fruit on it. You it's, know, you know it's got, fruit. yeah, exactly. You're getting, you're, you're getting those fruity, you're yes. getting those fruity aromas, uh, uh, high acidity, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, tannins are very present there too. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to, uh, I'm, I'm like, how do I relate this to something else I've had? I'm trying to figure out. Um, is anyone else in the chat having this right now? Oh, Alexa, you're having this right now. Yeah. Um, has anyone else tried this? Uh, or in the chat that's that's having this right now. Let me know what you're thinking. Um, I I really really like this. I, I mean I really yeah. Like it's it. a nice it's a, a nice balanced rosé and goes well either by itself because of that little fruitiness that it's yeah. got forwardness, but it's got the tan and the acid to go well with food. So it's a great picnic wine. Oh that's, yeah, this is know. perfect. Yeah. You know yeah. Oh man, picnic wine indeed. Ah. Oh. Yeah, or not is. today, not today. Yeah, not you know, today. Well, not today. A writer, yes. It was yeah. hailing here today. Oh yeah, we had we didn't have hail here, but up north they did. Yes, yeah. I, I haven't seen hail in L.A. and I don't. That was, that was weird today, but yeah, we had some hail today. It was, it was kind of crazy. Um, <clears throat> As they say, the whole world's changing. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know. how? So the the I mean a ninety six year old winery. How old are, are the vines? Well, the vines you're looking at behind me, the Merlot, were planted in about nineteen seventy four, I believe. Huh. And some of the older the oldest vines we had uh, were planted probably I'm going to say the thirties that are mm -hmm. still. And then we have other vineyards that were planted in the 40s. And then our newest vineyard, uh, our first uh, introduction of Cabernet into the Guglielmo estate was planted in uh, 2013. And within that uh, seven acre block, we actually planted one quarter of it to another Italian varietal, varietal called Sagrantino. So you'll have to look for that one now. There's again very limited production in the state of California, and uh, but everybody has a Cabernet. So we're trying to make unique wines for people to enjoy yeah. that are different and unique. You know, and we're trying to get people to explore other varietals and other flavors and pair them up with different foods. So I, yeah, I mean, I I think that's a fantastic idea. I mean, I always love learning about new different kinds of wines and and <clears throat> you know to have something that you 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 know normally you're going to find in you know P Piedmont Italy uh right here is, is pretty amazing and I uh, okay wait you said food I'm gonna I, I gotta here's what I want to do I gotta I gotta try a little bit of this there with, you go there you I'm gonna try go. a little bit of this with this there you go so maybe some maybe some prosciutto yeah there you go perfecto yeah Oh yeah, here we go. Let's just, you know, we're, since, we're gonna... since, since the Italian heritage, you got the prosciutto now to go with it. Yeah, we, we're concentrated on producing other Italian varietals as well as the Cagnolino and the Sagrantino. We do a Dolcetto, we do a Nibbiolo, and these are all varietals that are unique to the area my grandfather came from. Our grandfather. Yeah. 
So, That's and they there are food wines. Italians drink 90% of their wine when they sit down to eat. Of course, I mean, we're Italian, it, Italian, yes. you, you, you know, need, yeah. You got to have the food, you got to have the bread, and you got to have the wine. In 19, uh, when I got out of college in 1970, the per capita consumption uh, for wine in Italy, per capita consumption was, uh, they fought between the French and the Italian. And it was somewhere between 18 and 19 gallons a year per person average, okay? The United States was more maybe, you, maybe one. We're about three today. Uh, and oh, today, yeah. the Italians and the French are down to about 12 gallons because lifestyles have changed, becoming more urban, less rural, you know. And then, you know, a while, for a while, alcohol got a real bad rap. And, you know, even to this day, if people say you shouldn't drink alcohol. Blah, blah, blah. But then you have the other side that says, wait, well, if you want to live longer, you should drink alcohol because it helps this and helps that. And it helps, you know, it relaxes you. You know, drinking like anything else you do it in moderation you don't exactly. just exactly i mean i think we got some catching up to do here in the states if we're, if we're that low on the gallon uh level you know what we sure well, don't we sure rush like to it. see that <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah and no, Max, there was consider... a... sorry go ahead no we always consider wine as a food it's part of the meal so. mm -hmm. Not one to be abused. It's not one to be used for intoxication. It's a part of the meal. It gives. It's all about moderation. Yes. And that's what yeah. it. And that's what it always has been um, to me. You know, with just being Italian, it's just it, it's just there, and it, it's. Yeah. It's no. Right. right. That's right. the way. That's the way we were raised. It was always on the table, but nobody drank to get. It was it was just with the part meal. Yeah. with the meal. That was it. Yes. My, I mean, that's just how it is. My mom, my mom just commented in the chat. She said, "I grew up with wine on the table." Of course. I mean, that's. Well, just sometimes the jug was under the table, but the glasses were on the table. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, that's how it is too. When we were young, there was a little water in that wine. We didn't get the straight wine. You know, a little us, water in there as for kids. kids. Yes. Yes. So it was part of the culture. It was part of every day. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 that's how you know that's how it should be. Uh, uh, it, 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 my mom always said that that her uh, her grandma, my great grandma, she she would when she was cooking, she would have she would be drinking her marsala wine as she was cooking. Actually, it must be you must be Sicilian. Yes, that's yes that side. That's that's where the marsala comes into play. That's right. a wine specifically from Sicily. That that side was um, Sicilian because my mom had both uh, northern and southern Italy going on, so it was yeah crazy. But yeah, well, we could talk about that all day. The north and the south. So we better leave that one alone because we could uh, anyway. Yeah. So uh, it's it's a nice drinking wine goes with a lot of foods. It's not heavy, heavy, heavy. And you can even drink it at room temperature, which adds a little yeah. bit different than, than ice cold um, during the summertime. I'm gonna no. I'm gonna I'm gonna pair it right now with a with a fruit because you you know you said that I oh got yeah that. he's got some raspberries yeah. there. Mm-hmm. You know strawberry. Mm. we well, just uh, were notified we were just notified yesterday that we uh, won an award on this wine at the San Francisco Chronicle competition. So we're quite San pleased. Francisco. San Francisco yeah. Chronicle. Chronicle. We also got Which, you awards know, on a couple other of our wines too. So there were 5,200 wine, 5, wines entered. So I guess we make fairly good wines. Congratulations. That is. I don't put yeah. a lot of credibility into uh, judging wine and everything else because I think. It, they took those same wines and did the judging next week, they would be totally different awards on those. Because your palate changes, it isn't the same. But it does. But, you know, like we tell people, drink what you enjoy, what you like, not what somebody else tells you you should like. You know. Amen to that. You're yeah. the judge. Amen to that. 
Because I also think you 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 should be able to pair whatever food you like with oh. whatever wine you like. I right. Don't know. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Well, George. That's George, not me. Yes. George is a little modest, but we've won numerous hundreds of awards over the years. So I have to commend George on his winemaking abilities and the, the fact that we've won so many awards. We try to make wines in a real clean, natural style. So the grape comes through. And uh, for us, that's important. Not try to over process or overwork. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just, and I mean, you can tell it, you can tell it's just, um, you could tell this is a beautiful thank you oh, this is beautiful I, I this is a yes this is a uh you know you said picnic this is a this is a, a could be a beach wine kind of deal i mean this is yes i love i really love this or you could just have it with whatever you eat that's right just sip it like you're doing right now yes I, well, even for um, an Easter wine, this one's great because so many different people might enjoy it at the table. Yes. Because it is lighter, yes. That's so true. Yeah, an Easter wine. So, so um, uh, not a lot of sulfites and added yeast, et cetera, said Alexa. Yeah. Say that again. Alexa said, "Not a lot of sulfites and added yeast, etc." Added well, we use yeast during the production process. Yeah. It's not in this. There's no yeast in this wine now. As far as the sulfites go, every ninety-nine percent of wine produced in California over, uh, has uh, sulfur dioxide in it. Yeah. Just like dried apricots you eat every day. Um, they've been using sulfur in wines for probably the last uh, 500 years since they found out it would be an antioxidant and what have you. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I got all of them. Are you going to dry an apricot? Do they have, does he have them in there? Yeah. Well, yeah. So pepper? Or, uh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. Um, that's good. Oh. Do you... Uh, there's a question here from Shauna. Do you sell it in stores also? Very limited. You know, there were only around uh, 300 cases of this wine produced. 90% of it is, is distributed through the tasting room and uh, basically local stores. So we don't have a national distribution network. Uh, uh, we couldn't supply that with the, the, the wines we produce here. Although we have had some of our other varietals, like the Petit and the Zinfandel, featured at uh, different uh, Trader Joe's oh, stores in the okay. area. I think, uh, yeah, up in this area, and I think so. Yeah, basically. And Safeway in the local Safeway, you guys have it, and some of the Safeway yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah Safeway, Hills, all the local Rays. stores. Not have Hills, Rayleigh's, yeah. yeah, in the in their local market. So yeah, okay. Right locally um best way, the best way to buy them is just you can buy them online right from the winery right on the website i'm gonna um yeah guys i'm gonna pop in the website link right uh here for you so you can just click it right there it's gonna be right in the chat right there um and you're gonna have a 15 percent discount through the end of march uh and how does that work? They just have to write Mr. Cheesy Pops or YouTube video in the notes section on the web page, and then we'll apply the, the special discount. All right, cool. That's great. So just on, on all the on all our wines, not just the two we're sampling. So. Right. So on all the wines, fifteen percent off for the rest of the month. Of, uh, month if you type in Mr. Cheesy Pop in the notes, very easy. Um, <clears throat> or you know. Or go visit the winery. I know. Uh, I know a couple of you guys already actually visited the winery, so that's really neat. And well, uh, now we're on a res reservation thing where you just can't walk in the door. So remember that and COVID restrictions all the way through. Yeah. yeah. Of course, right. So the co yes, okay. So you can make a reservation. That that's great. Um, yeah. And when things loosen up, then it will be back to normal. Back to normal, and we encourage all of you to come and visit and yes. meet the family and uh, see our facility. I mean, I can't wait. I, I can't wait to, to get back. Well, you, you know you have an open invitation. 
Especially of being a having that Italian in you. No problem. You're in. <laughs> I love that. It's great. Well, that's why I was saying we got to get Max to come to the Harvest Festival. We can have him up there in the grape stomp and Allie can be out there helping him because you need to have a partner. So both of you guys, yeah. have to I think you'd have a lot of fun. Oh, we man. Do annual, we do have an annual Harvest Festival. At the wine. Well, we used to. We didn't last because of COVID. I don't think we're going to be able to do it. Uh, we'll see. Year. We're playing it by ear. Yeah. You know, whenever there's another Harvest Festival and I can uh, stomp on some grapes, you know, you, you just let me know I'm there. <laughs> we can do that. No problem. <laughs> well, you can come and help us during the harvest time and stomp on some grapes too. We could use that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm yes. I'm in. I want to stomp on some grapes. Let's let's go. Let's make this happen. <laughs> let's. Everyone's what? Everyone in the chat is very excited about stomping on some grapes. <laughs> Yeah, at the oh, harvest festival, so nice. it's a lot of fun. And then uh, Chef John Mark and Chef Chris both do the desserts. So, you know, those are absolutely amazing. Along yes. with, they do a pesto pasta and a Santa Maria steak and garlic bread and a green salad. So it's all delicious. My, uh, brother uh, takes care of the barbecue and I take care of the pasta. And uh, yeah, we have a band. It's it's a yeah. lot of fun. And garlic yeah, bread. It's all the family helping out everywhere. So my daughter usually helps uh, dad with making the pasta, they have fun in the kitchen, so. But see, I love this because it is such a family run business. You could see the family unit, how important it is to all of you. And, and I, you know, I just, I, I can relate to this. So, you know, that's why I love this. Yeah, man, I love it. So, um, okay, before I bring Jean-Marc in, cause I'm gonna bring him in, in a second here. So, um, Christina, so you, uh, you, you grew up on, on, the, on, the, on the vineyards there. Near, nearby, we lived close by, probably about like a mile, two miles away. Um, and then the high school that I went to is right across the street, literally across the street from the winery. So after school, I could walk across the street and go say hi to everybody. So that was always really neat. I remember getting stopped one time by one of the yard duties. He's like, where are you going? And I said, I'm, I'm going over to see my dad and my grandmother. He's like, who's your grandmother? I said, Madeline Guglielmo. He's like, oh, okay, no problem. Go ahead. So, uh, you were probably yes. coming over to steal some wine. No, I wouldn't dare do that. You guys know everybody in town. We didn't dare do anything wrong. We'd get in too much trouble. No way. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> right. So, but then, so then you, you, so you grew up there, but then you moved down to. Uh, uh, ever, yeah. Ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to work at Disneyland. So I've always been a huge Disney fan. So um, I. I uh, was going to get my degree in film, and then I changed it to hotel restaurant management and got my degree at Northern Arizona University in hotel restaurant management, did the college program at Disney World and at Disneyland, and my brother-in-law, Gary Majetti, was also getting his degree hotel restaurant management at the same time, so that's how Gary and I met, was in college, and we were, because um, his family's in San Jose, so we were flying buddies, so we would take Southwest friends fly free and we'd fly back. And that's when I met uh, his twin brother for the first time. Um, and then uh, once I, after I went to college and got my degree came and worked at Disneyland and dad always encouraged me to follow my dreams. If that's what I wanted to do, then he said, you know what, then go and try it. See if you can do it, see how you like it. So, and then I've been down here ever since. <laughs> yeah. So, and I, and and you see, this is what I love too, because we have this crazy Disney connection. So it's it's this is why this all worked, guys that you are watching right now, because we have this we have the Disney, the wine, the the Italy connection, and it's just it is it's it's beautiful. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, grandparents spoke French too, because they were very close to the French border. So we can oh. bring a little in if you want to. See, is je parle français? I'm going to bring Jean Marc in right now. There you go. Jean Marc's gonna come in now, and we're gonna we're gonna uh, try the cookies, and and then we're gonna and we're gonna try the uh, petite Syrah. So that's I'm next. Go well with the cookies too. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's <clears throat> Jean Marc coming in now. There he is. Bonjour, Jean Marc. I think you're muted. Let's unmute. 
There you go. You can hear me? Oui, bonjour. Oui, bonjour. <laughs> you bonjour. Know, um, bonjour. You know, Jean-Marc, I, 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 I... Salute. Ah, yes. Ching, ching. Salute. I got a drop left of that one. Dante. So... He's one of my daughters. So Jean-Marc uh, is going to be joined by his daughters here. So let me let me get your cookies up here, Jean-Marc. Oh my! <laughs> hey, that's our box. How'd you get it? <laughs> he got uh, it personally it delivered. delivered by the post you know, office. The post office just couldn't make it happen for you guys. <laughs> and. Uh, Max, the uh, Grignolina Rosé is also one of Jean-Marc's favorites that he loves when he comes to the wine and He's helping do all the amazing desserts for the Harvest Festival. I'm going to have another sip because of that. So Jean-Marc, so Jean you do, uh, you obviously um, make incredible desserts because, I mean, we're, you know, you, you can just look at these and you know, this is, this is exceptional. Um, I mean, oh my gosh. I don't know which one to try first, but I, I so you also do the desserts at the Harvest Festival. What, yes. what, what, and what else can you say? What, what else? Uh, what else? I've been getting impressed. I've been doing that, the uh, Harvest Barbecue for how long? About five years, John Mark? I think it was like six years, I think, the last time yeah. I counted. Yeah. Six years, yeah. It's one of the, I mean, it's a, one of the highlights of the year for me. Good. Because you know to well, see us, our, too. Our, us too, yes, and the <laughs> here, yes. To see you, you know. Uh, basically, this uh, this cookies, it's uh, you know, I've been uh, this year, I've been forty two years in the in the business of baking, and uh, my my two daughters really are pushing, pushing, pushing for a few years now. You know, you should do a business, you should do something. So we finally decided, you know, thank 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 you for COVID nineteen. Sorry to say this, but um, and uh, basically it's their business. You know, I'm just here to support them, um, here to teach them to bake, and uh, but we pride ourselves to do these. Uh, I mean, the, the premium handcrafted cookies made with um, premium ingredients. Uh, we pride ourselves right now to. I mean, especially uh, because we we bake only for Southern California at this time. But uh, we, we basically bake as close as, as delivery as possible. So, for example, for Max, uh, I delivered it, what, it was like 2.15 this afternoon. In my other so warm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is the brown butter milk chocolate with dipped in dark chocolate. And this is uh, one of the favorite. Um, it's brown also, butter. Uh, yeah, I use uh, European style butter, 83% butter. Okay. I use uh, milk chocolate. I mean, all the chocolate is uh, from France. Of course. Uh, okay, I, I, I'm going to take my first bite right now. Please. <laughs> oh, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, this is exceptional. Good, thank you. Oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> so, oh, wow. The, uh, this is unbelievable. And yes, these are only a few hours old. I mean, these are. Yeah. <laughs> hey, my daughter, Lisa, why don't you talk about the, the oatmeal? Because we do uh, the oatmeal cranberry coconut, we do. Go ahead. It's vegan. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. Okay, the oatmeal you have in a package as well. I mean, we have mm -hmm. six different cookies right now. There's the, this one is the original uh, BBD, this one? which is the brown butter. Uh, yeah, the oatmeal one is a uh, oatmeal cranberry coconut, and it's vegan friendly and gluten friendly. Oh, wow. And this oatmeal. is definitely one of the favorite as well. Everybody loves this one. Oatmeal. Oatmeal, cranberry, coconut. And, and gluten. Gluten friendly and, gl and vegan friendly. Okay, I'm gonna try this. Oh. 
Oh, wow. I mean, this... <laughs> oh my gosh, this is no joke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Guys, you got. <laughs> You guys have to get, okay, let me type in the, so, trust me guys, you're gonna to wanna to get some of these. Um, how do we order these? Um, you can go on our Instagram, which is CLV Baking Company, so CO at the end. Um, we take orders through DM, or you could also email us at um, CLV Baking Co. Okay. Can you try one more, Max? Try oh, the. I want to. I want to try all of them. Oh, <laughs> because that's one of my daughter's favorite too. Is the is white one with cinnamon, which is the the churro one. Did you say churro cookie? Yeah. Well, no. original. Originally, we made it as a snickerdoodle, but my daughter definitely said, "Well, it tastes so much like churro. Like we need to make it." To name it churro. Okay. Hold on one second. Let me get this out. I'm trying to type in the name of your um, Instagram here too. Wait, I'm going to type it in. Yeah, I'm just going to try and go in to help you on your chat while you're having those to try and type in for you. I'm going to type it in right now. I got it. Obviously, I owe George and Jean a whole bunch of cookies, but... I think I'm going to drive it, drive it to you guys. Hey, we have good memories. <laughs> <laughs> I, <know you> do. <laughs> I heard you. Um, are you serious with this cookie? <laughs> That's pretty cool. I mean, this is like, this is insane. Okay. All right, let's 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 taste this churro cookie. And actually, they're large enough. You know, if you if you uh, put them like. 10 to 20 seconds in microwave and put an ice cream on top of it. It's pretty cool as well. I bet. <laughs> A little vanilla ice cream on this. Woo. Oh, man. <laughs> That's actually made with brown butter as well. Wow, Listen. both with the brown butter. Yeah. Oh, I can yeah. taste that. Those cookies look delicious. Yeah. They just got lost in the mail somewhere. They were supposed to be there yesterday, and they just oh, didn't match up. Well, now oh. I know what. I think they got hijacked by the mailman or something. I think so. Uh, no. You know, <laughs> you know, if, if, you know the, the mailman. If he's smelling these in his bag, he's like, "Probably never got out of Southern California, huh?" I don't know. It said it made it to Oakland, but for some reason, it just didn't get to Morgan Hill. Hmm. Um, I don't know how you do this. This is there. There's some um. There's some French secret happening here. That's what I think. Because <laughs> well, Jean don't... Marc's one of the top ten pastry chefs in the United States. So, you know, he's amazing, and his daughters are learning how to be just as amazing as he is. They have that special touch. What's it like? Yeah, one of the top 10 pastry chefs. So how do you get, so, okay, explain to me. So when did you come over here to the US and, and just explain to me, you know, the background. Okay, well, I arrived uh, in 1986 in the, in, the, in the States. So last century, basically. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, I started a little, I started working in a little restaurant in Newport Beach called the Biarritz at the time. Uh, I didn't stay long, but after that I was at the, uh, a hotel called the Meridian in Newport Beach. Uh, after that I went to the Four Seasons Newport Beach and both of these hotels are no more. I mean, they're, they're different hotels now. From there I moved to uh, Texas at the higher regions in Dallas. After that I moved to Atlanta to the Hilton and Tower in downtown Atlanta. And from there, I came back to California to the Beverly Hilton. Uh, Beverly Hilton, I stayed uh, around 
five year, over five years at the Beverly Hilton. From there, I went to the Ritz Carton in Pasadena. And from the Ritz Carton, I started uh, 22 years ago at the Disneyland Resort. Okay, where I am now. Amazing. 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 Congratulations. It's, it's just incredible. Uh, you know, congratulations on all of that. So when these two start baking, start packing, start, you know, obviously they are behind all the, all the website and publicity. I mean, they're much more worse than me uh, than doing this, but they're exciting to, they, they're exciting to do that. So I think oh, it's great. a good thing. Uh, it, it and and you guys the uh, I just ate half of the churro cookie. Um, what a nice peanut butter too. You like peanut butter? Yeah, I love peanut butter cookie. Wow, try this one. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're not gonna sleep at night, uh, Max. <laughs> Wait, you know what's amazing about the cookies? Um, so the the outside of the cookie has got uh, it, it it's got it's at least a little hard. And then as you get deeper into the center, it gets softer. It's like the, per that's the perfect cookie. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So for um, Jean-Marc and my husband, Christopher Majetti, when they do the desserts for the Harvest Festival, it's always fun to see the two of them working together and then what they create and what Jean-Marc, how they come up with these different ideas um, is just fun. amazing. And it's so delicious. And we've had, uh, it's yeah, Daphne come out and help too. It's a, it's a great uh, it's a great family event. I mean, and uh, I mean the Guglielmo family. It's I mean, unbelievable people. You know, uh, um, I have to say, you know, it's 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 great to 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 be part of that. It's it's an honor to be Thank part. Thank you of for that. being part of our yeah part of this barbecue. No, it's you know it's unbelievable. I mean. You're like part of the family now. I appreciate that. Trust me, I appreciate that a lot. Well, Max love, is too now after eating all those cookies. I love <laughs> this. I love this. This is a big happy family right on screen. And, and <laughs> peanut butter and the peanut butter cookies just as good. I'm obsessed. <laughs> um, the peanut butter, you know, a little more, a little more of a, a savory cookie which is good now, because I'm gonna go pour our petite Syrah, huh? There you go. How's that, how's that for a segue? Do we? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you should try also the, I mean, the petite, I love the petite Syrah from, from, from the winery, by the way. It's a great wine. And I think that would match pretty good as well with uh, yes. molasses gingerbread. Yes. What? Yes, yes, I agree. <laughs> Hold on one second. As I Between this... your uh, black, the black market culinary uh, charcuterie board and your cookies, you don't have to worry about dinner tonight. You're set. Oh no, I'm I am all good tonight. It's so good. So the bl uh, black, uh, where, where, okay. What am I? What am I trying now? <laughs> Molasses gingerbread. Yes. <laughs> Uh, this is a good day. Um, okay. it's, not, it's not a traditional molasses gingerbread uh, because I actually put a little bit of uh, orange zest and mayo lemon zest in there. Uh, oh, that's what I'm... Yes. Mm. So... This is insane. These are insane. These are insane. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just. Okay. You said it's going to go great with the petite sera. So we got, we got the petite sera. I think, yeah. I mean, it would be pretty good. Yeah. You know, the spices with the, with, with the red wine is pretty good. And chocolate. Yeah, the petite sera is going to have spiciness to it. Yes, exactly. Yep. I think that's what's going to interject with the, the gingerbread in there also, you know. Um, Tizara is basically a French variety, and it's starting to be called Durif, D-U-R-I-F, I think it is, yes. Mm. And um, so it's very hard now. You're seeing these intermixed 
they're synonymous. They're the same. They're the same, um, same variety. And uh, it was a Dr. Dereef that figured out that the, uh, the Dereef, and that's why it's named Dereef, was a cross between, I believe it was a white variety and Syrah. Um, but there's no relationship other than that with the, is it two of those varieties? Let me see. I think it's a, uh, yeah, we got. It's one of our flagship yeah, wines. And Syrah, yeah, yeah. It's always been a big giant wine. You yeah. realize when our vineyards were first planted, uh, they didn't plant a block of Zinfandel and a block of Petit Syrah. They were all planted within the same block. We didn't make varietal wines back then. We make we made wines for people to drink with food, and so the blend was the feel almost. And now everything has changed away from that, and the Petit Syrah is is. Probably it's not as popular as, as Cabernet, of course. There's about 11,000 acres in the state of California. We have seven of that here at our own estate here in Orange Hill. And it does make a very dark, beautiful colored wine. Just yes. That wine. You know, I you can't even see it in the glass. And, you know, that'll hold it's up. It's got to that it. fragrance on there, a little bit of oak with a peppery uh, yes. uh, finish, which adds a lot to food. Very, uh, you know, you're gonna get that. I, I mean, you're gonna get that. Uh, obviously, full body, peppery finish, and you, you get, you know, there, there's 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 the dark berries in here, but but oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, the berries. In you know, too. there's a lot of descriptive words that they use to describe wine today. Yes. Cherry, you know. <laughs> the, yeah, well, there, but 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 when you take a sip and then you feel it. Oh, you do. There's that. There's yeah. that pepper. It's the it's the yeah. peppery. Yeah. yeah. It's yep. a nice wine. It's almost chewable, but it'll so, hold up well with your heavy dishes, steaks. Nice meats. big steak. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's a great companion wine for those type of dishes. That's with that's, that gingerbread cookie. You might try that right now. Dunk it in there. <laughs> And then put it in your mouth. Yeah. Gingerbread cookie now? Yeah, and dunk it. He said dunk, dunk it. Dunk it into the wine. Dunk the cookie in the wine. Yeah. yeah. You're That's Italian. A boy. Don't you eat biscotti? That's the way you eat biscotti. You take them and you dump them in the wine. And you eat. I mean, that's the way I grew up. I don't know. <laughs> Everybody's different in the world. I did bring Jean Marc's mm. uh, some of his special gingerbread cookies up to dad. I guess it was two Christmases ago, and he had to make sure. He went right inside oh. the red wine. No, make sure when I go to Morgan here, I bring some biscottis. There you go. You got those on your list, too. You better get them on there. Yeah. You better drive up a truck. <laughs> well, you know, so that's the petite. And uh, um, the, I think the first varietal petite came about in about 19, in the early... 60s. And the first winery that was to do that was the Concannon Winery out of Livermore. And then it kind of, uh, our first petite we produced in 1969. And uh, that's actually when our varietal program started. So it's not that popular a wine, but there are, there are a fair amount of, of varietals in the marketplace. I think, I mean, I think this is delicious. This, uh, I know there's a couple of people that are drinking this right now along with us. And I just want to tell you. Um, Alexa's telling you, you should have dunked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alexa, okay, should I? Well, nobody listens to put me more anyways. Wine, <laughs> more wine in the glass. Though. Yeah, you got to put more wine in the glass. <laughs> Do that when we're off the camera, then we don't have to watch it. And then you don't have to feel so bad. <laughs> no, I, I, look, you know what? If people want this, then it's fine. I, 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 I don't, I don't mind. You know? <laughs> Let's try yeah. it. I, I seriously will, will, you know what? I don't know if it's going to fit though. You know what I mean? I have to break off a piece to, actually, well, to try it. Yeah. yeah. I have to break off a piece to actually get, this is a first. Okay. Let's, let's, let's try this. <laughs> Whatever you're gonna do. 
There you go. Now that's Italian. It'll taste totally different than, yes. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I prefer them separately, but. Not bad together. No, it, it weirdly works, but I don't I don't know that. <laughs> well, you're not going to do this every time you eat a cookie. That's what I'm saying. No. <laughs> that is a first. I'm glad we got that on 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 uh, good on camera for the first time ever. I dump a, a dunk a cookie in wine. Oh my gosh, you guys. Well, you know that's really a tradition in some parts of Italy where you dunk it in, and particularly in the uh, Tuscan area by Florence, they have a wine called Vinsanto, which is a uh, a kind of a Swedish style wine, and you get that biscotti and dunk it right in there, and hmm, right after dinner, it's pretty darn good. It's not bad. It's it, it, I mean, it's, it's it's a little weird, but I think with the right cookie, it makes sense. Like, yes, well, that's of course. Cookie, yes, that I don't think you want to put a peanut butter cookie in there. No, you want no. To, oh no. You want to put a fillet cookie in there? A fillet, yeah. Jean Marc, can you make a fillet mignon cookie? <laughs> I, can. I can do it in the shape of a fillet mignon, not the taste. Actually, I think the in the petite Sierra, maybe the maybe the the churro cookie would go better. Maybe. Oh, possibly the churro cookie. I <laughs> think there's a vanilla in there and cinnamon. It's just vanilla and cinnamon. Well, you're gonna have to sit down and decide those things. <laughs> Tough I choice. I think the uh, the Bengal barbecue pork belly skewer would taste delicious with this one. We all ate those things, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we make them at home, so they're. Yeah, you have Alexander can make it for you. You're My not. son enjoys making them. So dad dad has taught us how to be able to make our own pork belly at home on our Traeger. I actually, I have that recipe on our blog. So you, what's the blog? Uh, dream is a wish our blog makes.com. Great. So, and then Chris did a special um, pineapple dole whip with a uh, Traeger smoked pineapple and a um, smoked sea salt. It's really, it's, it was amazing. It turned, it was delicious. Man, okay, so. And we're working on more recipes to add. Dinner at Christina's. Because <laughs> uh, they're cooking up, because they're, Christina's got her own Bengal barbecue at her house, apparently. Not only that, you get cookies with it after dinner. <laughs> yeah. Well. You know, we have done where we had Jean Marc and the girls come over one year for Thanksgiving, and that was to have two executive chefs in the house cooking. I mean, there were a lot of dishes. I will say that a lot of dishes, but you know, the food was absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, I never got the invite on that one. What happened? <laughs> Good times. Good times. Oh, great. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying that Petite Syrah, Max, because that's uh, like I I our flagship wine. We won many awards with that wine as well. So and we want to expose your, you folks to trying something that you normally wouldn't pull off a shelf. I love it. I really do. And, and you know what? I'm going to take a, uh, I want to have a little cracker here to kind of neutralize my, my palate <laughs> again. You sure oh that's own. a cracker? That looks like a piece of cookie to me. No, it's a, it's a, it's a simple cracker. I was going to neutralize my palate and take another sip of the pizza. I've, got, I've heard so many. <laughs> well, you know, the best way to enjoy it is, is not in front of everybody swirling and doing all that. It's with your meal, sitting down with a good steak or whatever you like a nice heavy red wine with. And that's really feel the 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 pulse of the wine oh, yeah. meal. And that's what wines were created for. To complement a meal. Exactly. You this used to be them. able to go to a restaurant and buy 25 bucks and a bottle of wine was 10. It shifted all the way around now. You go to a restaurant and you buy a dinner for 25 and the bottle of wine costs you 30 or 40, which is, you know, totally, uh, yeah, unique. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's crazy. You, I mean, you must have, I mean, 
you know, being in the wine business for this long, you, you did, it's completely changed since oh, when you started. Seen a tremendous amount of change, yes. Well, and that's you know. why we're very proud that we've been able to adapt and change and meet the demands of our the consumer and, and the changes in the industry. And the quality so we've upgraded our, uniqueness. our yeah. techniques. We've up, we're always in the mode of making better wine. And uh, so we've... we've but the one thing is we're very proud of what we do and Published? names on every bottle and yeah. take a lot of pride in the quality of the wines. And you yes. can and you can you can taste it. I mean, you just know when you taste something. You you know you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know when something is made uh, with love and um, you know everything that I've had tonight is certainly made with a lot of love. I mean that is. Thank you. Is, yes, I mean, it's just let everybody enjoy. Exceptional, you know. Uh, you got look at that. Look at the sky behind you over there. That is. Yeah, well, you got the clouds going. That makes better wine when they get blue like that. <laughs> oh, that is, yeah, it is well, a beautiful night with big clouds and this cumulus clouds floating around and some of those little rain clouds. And yeah, it is. It is very nice. Beautiful. Oh, very nice. You ought to see how the other way is. Well, we're we're blessed to be located in an area that's ideal for growing world class grapes to make world class wines. We're close to the coast. We've got good soil here, so the climate is perfect. As long as it doesn't change too much, is what's happening. So far, so good. Because the because you know, I'm I'm, I'm just I'm I'm looking at I'm googling you know here on the map. You and, there, have, and there's a lot of wineries that are in Santa Clara Valley that people don't even realize because they're in Silicon Valley, but well, that's people weird. don't yeah. think of that as a wine region. And like, Dad, mm -hmm. I think you were telling us yesterday that it um, it actually started before Napa. Was that correct? Is that what you said? The Santa Clara Valley wine well, region? The, the commercial wine industry started in, uh, in the Santa Clara area with the, uh, Charles Lefranc, who started uh, what was called the Almaden Vineyards in 1852. And uh, Paul Masson came along. You know, in the early 70s, there, were more, there was more premium, uh, premium wines bottled in the Santa Clara Valley than in Napa. Oh, wow. We had huge wineries here, a large size winery that had national distribution. And that's what the whole thing is with wines today, distribution. Sure. And Almaden and Palmasan that were huge wineries that one was owned by national distillers, the other one was owned by Seagram. So they had the distribution network. So they were, you know, and that's, and then they all faded out of the picture. Now the labels still may be there, but there's no more Paul Masson. There's no more uh, individual winery that come by another uh, conglomerate or whatever. It could be. Okay. But the wine industry is alive and well in, in South County, South, South Santa Clara Valley. So like Chrissy said, there's over 35 wineries down here and mostly small family operated and it's a different feel. So you can visit probably talk to the owner or the winemaker right there when you're tasting so that's see, that's really amazing because that that's amazing because when you go to napa you can't really do that anymore because it's just so big um it, well, it becomes quite crowded it's a little bit like disneyland up there no put no <laughs> put down disneyland but it is packed and it's as, yes, as far as the crowds, the tourists, it is, yeah. yes. And, and you know, if you look at the map here, guys, I'm going to show you a map here of, of, of our, our lovely state. And you, you can kind of see, uh, can you see? No. Yes. Yeah. yeah, once you got it close enough, you could see it. Yep. So, like, here I am in, in L.A., and then here's Guglielmo Winery right there. 70 miles south of San Francisco, right on the El Camino Real. Right. And then up here is Napa, where that yellow dot is. Uh, if, so we have similar climate and uh, weather. You do. Uh, as Napa, actually. So Because of the, the coast. Right. The coastal, coastal we get influence. a lot of coastal influence here in in as well as Napa does. So you get that cool, 
cooling evenings, warm days, possibly cooling even, which helps produce a better quality wine, keep the acidity in there rather than just constant heat all the time. And the soils are, are unique and different to, to well, each Shirar, as we call it, soils, is different in every little vineyard area, even in the, in the county here. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, so our climate is pretty much about the same as St. Helena, as far as uh, heat degree days. I'm not going to even get, now we're going too far, but it's yeah, the it degree days you have to ripen your fruit. And we're very, very similar to uh, 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 St. Helena, which would be like a district two. Yeah. And Five so districts. Where, all we ask is when you think of wine country, think of Santa Clara Valley. There you go. Well, mainly for... <laughs> Well, to try something different because a lot of people haven't tried Santa Clara Valley. So it's closer. It's along the way. If you go uh, up the coast and you go through Paso and, and then come up the coast and uh, go to, come into Santa Clara Valley and then um, head on up to Napa. But you could try the wineries along the way through the whole region. You can stop in Monterey and then end in Morgan Hill, Santa Clara Valley. And, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's whatever you want. California <laughs> is just, yes, we are loaded with our wineries. It's, it's pretty. Yes. What's the 5,000 now? 5,000. Um, guys, so you, have you, a lot. you have a lot of choices. Do you have any questions, uh, people at home? Uh, any questions uh, for uh, George, Jean, Jean Marc, Daphne, Itza, Christina? Uh, we we got we got wine wine questions or all of the cookie questions. I mean, there's you know while you're thinking of questions, guys, I will say this. Um, I want to tell you guys a, a little bit more about the the black culinary black market culinary um, charcuterie plate. So that uh, Chef Adrian does so. This is the small one. Okay, this is three cheese, three meat. And then we also have the really large one here. Oh my goodness. Okay. And this yeah, it's beautiful. He surprised me with one of those today. And I was like, oh my gosh, it is beautiful. Gorgeous. My son just walked in and he saw it and he was like, his eyes got huge. What is that? <laughs> So, so the whole family can enjoy it. Yes. Well, that, that's definitely family size. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or it's just, just, just Allie and I size, but you know, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> we're we're going we're gonna to be eating that for the next few days. It's amazing. Good for you. Um, I just wanted to mention one thing. We, there's one way to become part of our family and that's to join our wine club. We have an active wine club that's a, uh, uh, a lot of fun and we give you extra discounts, discounts on events we have. And it also, a lot of the bottling, special bottlings and limited production uh, go primarily to our wine club. So a special uh, treatment and it makes sure you know that. So that all the information's on our webpage. Okay, yeah. great. So one little, one little sideline here, every, Four times a year, under normal circumstances, we put together what we call Bottle Your Own, where we make a 24 barrel a blend of 24 barrels, and you bring your own empty bottles to the winery or buy the empty bottles that you flow through, and you are able to fill your own bottles. We'll put the cork on it, put the label on it, and you're out of here for a very, very reasonable price. And um, so yeah, well, that's quite well attended. Of course, we're not doing it now with the uh, COVID uh, interference, but uh, yeah. And even with the bottle of your own, you can have, they can make you um, personalized labels that you can put. So they're awesome for birthday presents. Yeah, awesome labels, present you can put your own label. To be we able to do that too. Bottle. Yeah. Oh, it's a lot of fun. We try to yeah. create a lot of uh, fun events here at the winery as well as make good wine. So <laughs> yeah. it's all about getting together. And enjoy. Have some good wine and enjoy each other. I love it. I think you, yeah, you have a wine club member here, Anneli. Um, wine club. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Thanks for watching. 
Yeah. So, okay, we do, uh, we do have questions. So uh, yeah. if you have time. Sure, the sun's still well, up. We had time to watch you enjoy those cookies. So I think we can talk. <laughs> You know, yeah, I can mention one more thing if you want the full experience of the Guillermo winery, uh, because I was the first one actually to stay in a cottage. Oh, the villa, yes, the John villa. Mark. And oh my God, that was amazing. So you have a, a, a villa which was Airbnb, basically. Yes. Oh, really? And it's right on the vineyard. And this is, oh my God, this is unbelievable. Well, we could have had a better guy break it in. <laughs> so we could stay there too. Yes. It's they have one room, so they're going to be putting that <laughs> online soon after, you know, once it's safe for everybody to be able to stay and it's right it's right on the vineyard. I mean, you yeah, can just you could. walk right over to the tasting room to the I mean to the outdoor uh, tasting and yeah. be able to experience that and be right there on the vineyard and see, you know, the day-to-day. -day yeah, not that close. You got a little distance between us. So, yeah. But you can walk right through the vineyard to get to the wine. Yes. So, very close. All right. I got. I got. I got to. I got to stay there. Yeah. So you had a question or questions? Yeah. There are. Uh, wait, hold on. Hold on. There are questions. Let me. I got to scroll back here. Okay. Uh. Okay. Oh, okay. First, I can answer this one, Luke. Uh, how much is the charcuterie? The three meat, three cheese is 45. The five meat, five cheese is 60. And that is, you can order it on Instagram. And I'm going to type it in there. Uh, Black Market Culinary. So 45 and 60. Cool. Um, question here from Alexa. These wines are so complex and beautiful. I would love to hear more about the winemaking process and what causes that complexity and be beautifulness, I guess. Yeah. Well, you have to start with the grape. And we, uh, 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 both of these wines that you are, uh, enjoying are both uh, state grown, produced and bottled, and it's, which means we grow them, we take care of everything from planting way back, all the way now to the crushing, to the uh, aging and to the bottling of these wines. And, and, and we look at each wine individually because each wine every year, every year is not exactly the same. We decide how much time we're going to give it in oak and, when, it. and then we'll take it from there. As far as the crushing, the crushing is is pretty much uh, standard. Uh, uh, we inoculate with the culture of yeast that we know is going to do what we want it to do to produce the flavors that we want in that wine. And uh, from there, it goes to the barrel and uh, racked a couple times, which is nothing more than clean the sediment out from the wine. And then uh, uh, our oaks are uh, uh, utilized in in the blending process and then we'll put the blend together to our liking and put it in the bottle give it a little bit of bottle age <clears throat> before we release it whereas with the grignolino now that is a lighter wine that is just produced so we basically uh, crush those and that'll be in the bottle probably within a year after we produce it whereas the petite syrah a lot more complexity to it there's a lot of difference you know like the grignolino we ferment with leave the skins in contact with the juice maybe overnight. Whereas the petit syrah, all that color comes from the skin itself. So we have to go through a process which is punching down, which is taking the, uh, uh, the, the seeds actually fall to the bottom of the tank and the skin rise to the top. And so we're constantly twice a day pushing those skins back in contact with the fermenting must to get the color released from those skins. Then pressing and then into the winery aging and so forth and so forth. Cool. If that quickly answers your question. I, think, I mean, I think it's a great answer. Yeah, that's great. Thank well, you. The thing is you have to watch and nurture the wine all through the process. So it's not just make it, throw it in the barrel and forget about it. You're on, you're on top of it, monitoring it, seeing how it's maturing and taking the proper steps. But it, George says 
all comes from the quality of the grape. Well, that's any wine, yes, yeah. right. Yeah. You have to start with a good grape. Of course, it's great. Um, uh, great, Kelsey here said, I went to college near the Santa Clara Valley, such a great wine region, so excited to visit you guys soon. So that's great. Thank oh, that's you. Great, thanks, Kelsey. Uh, uh, Shauna here, uh, question for Jean-Marc. <laughs> I don't know if you can reveal this, but do you undercook the cookies to make sure they are really soft? Uh, I don't undercook them. I cook them right. I don't overcook them. But um, uh, no, the amount of, uh, especially the, 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 the brown butter cookies, I mean, that. Actually, Shauna, you, you, yeah, you're right in, in some of the cookies. The, the ginger and the churro are slightly undercooked, slightly, but maybe one minute. Uh, but the, the, the brown butter cookies, the, the BBDC and the milk BBDC, uh, actually uh, uh, are naturally, I mean, I, I cook them the, the right amount. They, they, they stay soft because of the amount of butter and what butter we use. Okay, we use a European style butter, which is 83% uh, fat content. So we have a b basically four to five percent more fat than a regular butter you can buy. In uh, don't tell everybody that you know. More, more, yeah. more fat. More fat. <laughs> it's good but, for but, you. More fat is no, it is. You know what? Look, look, look. If you're having the yes. more, more butter, more butter. More. Yes. Yes. More wine. Yes. No, the, the, the wine, the wine upset the fat of the butter. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the fat equals flavor. You know, that's one thing my husband always told me. Told me it's always, I should say, it's a lot of fun watching my husband, who's the executive chef for Disneyland, and my dad cooking together, and they're playing with each other when they're in the kitchens and and having fun, and then when we get to have Jean Marc come over, it's just. It's so much fun in the kitchen. I mean, I don't cook. I just go for a drink and, uh, and eat. I think it's more fun at the table, eating that great food. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, yeah. that's where the real fun lies. But I would love to see that whole process, you know, because I'd be if, if I was in a room with with all of them, you know, I'd be watching every single thing. <laughs> <laughs> the way the food at the Harvest Festival is insane, okay, and um, the. Oh my God! The garlic bread is the world-class garlic bread, and best ever garlic bread at the wine festival, at the harvest festival. Amazing. When well, you gotta eat good food with good wine. Yeah. Oh, I see. Hi, right, what's up, RJ? I see. But he said RJ said butter is the secret of life. Yes, I agree with RJ. That butter is very important. As long as you have wine to go with it. That's true. There was a, uh, way back in the 70s, there, there was what they call the French paradox, where, you know, people in uh, France were eating goose fat, butter, cream, and cheese and everything. But the people in the United States were, had the heart disease and all these things because we're eating that. And it was all traced back to red wine that the French drank quite readily and helped keep them healthy. This paradox. And that's when the red wine consumption in the United States started to go up, 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 that it was mostly white and lighter wines. And there was a new study that just came out, I believe it was the University of Iowa. I need to double check that, but they were talking about how drinking red wine every day, having cheese and lamb once a week actually helps your memory. So that was a great, I thought that was great information. Well, mm. I got actually saw one that said it helped prevent COVID. Yeah, I saw that too. I've seen that one too. I needed that one. Yes. <laughs> cool. You and needed to have more red wine. Come on. That's more right. red wine. You're preaching to the choir here. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, man. Mm. It's too funny. My, um, oh, my mom wrote something about peaches in the Syrah. Peaches in wine. Yeah. Oh, peach taste. What's 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 good? My mom wrote a comment here about peaches in Syrah as dessert. What what's yes. going on? Oh yeah, well, yeah, we yeah. we had put them together. We would slice peaches. We would slice 
uh, strawberries and uh, put them, the wine on top of them, maybe with a little sugar. And that was a fantastic dessert. And yeah. a little amaretto cookies too, right, Dan? That's, that's, from, that's from the north. <laughs> Italian, that's northern Italian. <laughs> that's why you don't know about it, Max. No. <laughs> My oh, his mom does. His mom does. My mom knew uh, about it. It might be. I'm only kidding. The north, but that was a. We had every summer. We had that. Not every day, but very often. Strawberries uh, and white wine, or even red wine. Now you put the wine on it, and then you refrigerate it a little bit. Let it, then let it the flavors soap. come up together. Right. Yeah, and then it's nice and cold, and yeah, on a, on a hot day. Wow. So this is a normal Italian thing to do. To some extent, yes. I don't know anything normal about Italians. Oh, uh, yeah. No, we're crazy. <laughs> we are out there. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got all, we got, we got Italy and France yeah. here today. Yeah. Oh, man. yeah. yeah. It's just we like are. dunking the cookie in the uh, wine. You didn't like that either. So you better try the uh, strawberries and uh, wine and, and the also summertime. Well, you know, anything too that you produce. You got to use fresh fruit here. Yeah. Yeah. Fresh fruit. Amazing, amazing you produce too is the port. And I remember, I know yeah, it was, port also, I believe yes. that two years ago uh, for the Harvest Festival, I did uh, a macaron with a port cream inside. And that yeah. was super good. That makes a lot of sense. That sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah that was delicious. So, so if I take some fruit and I, I put it in here. You don't have any fresh fruit right now. Well, I got strawberries. Well, yeah, you yeah. do have strawberries? Yeah, maybe they are starting to come in from Oxnard, way down there where you guys What you got to do is yeah, slice. Yeah, they're fresh, yeah, and they're ready to go. Well, you know, most of the strawberries we were with white wine. And okay, some I got blueberries? Well, yeah, well, no raspberries we never had. No. Were, uh, okay. not okay. grown, not readily available like they are today back when we're talking about. So I have strawberries, blueberries, and, and, and raspberries here. Oh, I got blackberries. If I wanted to dip it in here, I can try that. Well, again, we didn't use only strawberries because there was a lot of strawberries grown in our area and, and peaches because we have a lot of peaches also. The and it was more slicing it up, right? And then letting it sit right. in the slicing wine. And then sometimes they would put slicing. some of those amaretto cookies. Would you guys do that on top, the amaretto cookies? Well, yeah. you could scrumble it up. Yeah. Crumbs good or just these cookies. I love this. I mean, this is so fascinating too because I see people in the comments here. So Amanda here said, um, uh, I can confirm I'm engaged to an Italian. I love this. Um, and oh, Joyce, yeah, Joyce Rossi, of course. Ross, yeah, half a whole peach in a glass of wine, memory from Tuscany. Yeah. 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 Uh, Tuscany, Santa Land. Yep. Oh yeah, uh, uh, yeah. This is um, yeah. Like okay. Beefsteak quarantine after dinner. Woo. Oh yeah. I don't know. I'm gonna. I, I I gotta do something with the strawberry, and I got the. Uh, you, know. you, you, you gotta slice, you gotta you slice, gotta slice it up it. and let it soak in there. That's the soak. Not like that. No, it's not that. Just dunk it in there. Not dunking. Like it's not, not gonna, gonna absorb it. it. It's not gonna do it like the cookie. Uh, you got just yeah. enough wine to slice it into there. Go have your chicory and eat it, and then come back and have the strawberry. Mm -hmm. All right. So maybe I'll pop another strawberry in there. And there then you have go. It like slice a it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is unbelievable. And I um, have our uh, port. Which I will say tasted amazing with the Disneyland toffee, chocolate covered toffee. Oh my goodness gracious, that was amazing. So you have to try that, Max. The port, hold that up again, please. It's what we call our Eredita port, is a port oh. made with a uh, unique blend of Portuguese varieties. Now, we, we source the wine and then we age it here, make the blend, and then we put it in the bottle. To port break. is a totally different process making than still wine. It's a fortified wine, so it's much easier for us to source the quality we're looking for and make the blend here and put it in the bottle. Amazing. Okay, so port and Disneyland toffee. Yes. I'm going to have to bring you a bottle of the port so you can try it. 
Because that's what Chris told me when he brought me home the Disneyland toffee and he said, here. And I said, oh, I'm going to have that with some of the, I was going to have it with red wine. He said, no, no, have it with the port. Oh, it was very delicious. Wow. So uh, which, to, wait, so the, the, which toffee was it? It was the chocolate covered with the nuts on top. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The candy oh, shop. Like the normal top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Oh, man. Yeah. No, I bet that's perfect. How long, um, there's a question, how long is the port aged? There is probably around, right now, the port that's in that bottle is probably around six years old. And it's aged in, in oak barrels, of course, for about uh, three to four years. Okay. Okay. That, you can, that you can continue to age. And it will get better. Beautiful. Um, I mean, this is this is great. This is just <laughs> good. We'll have to do it again next year, huh? <laughs> well, as soon as he can send you some more cookies, we'll get back online. <laughs> we'll see. What like. Well, I know you're doing great, Max, because you're doing all the eating. Yes. <laughs> You're probably going to get them tomorrow. Over because it's been a long time since lunch. What are you? Uh, what? Yeah. What are you eating tonight for for dinner? <laughs> what am I eating for dinner tonight? Yeah. Probably uh, frittata. Oh, a frittata. Nice. Well. Yeah, dad cooks all the time at home, and he makes amazing food. And we always had fun growing up. Always cooking something different that he was making in the kitchen. Wow. So, and he has fun with, uh, the grandkids too. Mussels okay. and clams and all those unique things that people don't really eat all the time. Duck. Duck, yeah. Not that much duck. Lately, yes. Yeah. Um, I love this. This was, this was really so much fun. Uh, uh, really, a, a blast. I um, Before we go... I just want to make sure that we get all the info out there to, to order, you know, everything. Um, I, I put the link for uh, Guillermo Winery. So you got that with 15% off with Mr. Cheesy Pop. Um, and then Say La Vie Bakery. That is on Instagram. And are you also doing a 15% off with Mr. Cheesy Pop? What's the deal there? The 15 cookies. 15 cookies. For Instead of the, for the dozen price, right, Jean-Marc? Yes. Yes. So, you, so to order that, you go on your Instagram and you could send a, a DM? Yeah, that okay. my daughters take care yes. of it, you know, and we can... Uh, we actually can deliver up to 15 miles from our home base for free. Okay. okay. I'm going to type it in again, guys, so you know. Say love you, Baking Co. We can pick up. I mean, we're next to Los Angeles. Uh, I mean, we're in uh, uh, Alhambra. It's not far from Los Angeles, like 10 minutes from Los Angeles. So. Right. Pick up as well. Perfect. Okay. And pick up too. Okay. Um, the cookies are, oh, there's a question about how many ounces are the cookies? Three ounces. Yep. Three ounces. What happened to my video? <laughs> yeah. For some reason, your video disappeared. <laughs> it's like, where did Max go? There he is. Why not? Why not? You know, we got to throw some crazy technical difficulties. Well, now we've got you on the bottom and we're on top. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's great. Um, and if, if you missed any of it, all of the information to get anything that we showed here tonight is on uh, my Instagram. So you can go check it out all there, guys, um, at Mr. Cheesy Pop. So uh, it's all there. Uh, I, 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 can't, I, can't, I can't thank you all enough. This was so thank much you. fun. It, it really was. A little bit no. different for you. No, you know why I love this too. It really just felt like I was uh, at the dinner table with my family. So this was great. We, were. we washed you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, 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 
I love you. You were at the dinner table, Max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Part of this and being connected up with the uh, charcuterie and the bakery also. Yep. And any questions that uh, were not able to be uh, asked about the winery, just have anybody just uh, give us a call or email. Yeah, or they can send me a message on Instagram and then I can yeah. answer them for them because I do all their social media for the winery. Awesome. That's great. Uh, this was really, really Thank you, everybody. A pleasure. Thank you. Uh, thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you. Buona notte. Thank you so much. Bon nuit. Thanks, man. Bon nuit. <laughs> See, I speak all the languages. We love this. this I, I mean, it was just such a, a, a delight, an actual delight to have you all here. Uh, really, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much. Grazie, grazie. Merci beaucoup. Merci. All right. Bye, everybody at home. Good night. Bye. <laughs>